So I want to start this video by saying that you guys probably spend way too much time on this whole niche subject. The amount of questions, messages that I get from people asking me if this niche is good. I've cold called for three weeks in this niche and I haven't seen any results. Do I have to change niche? Is it good? Is it not good? All right, you guys spend a bit too much time on this subject. And I feel like many of you are using this as an excuse as to why you're not being successful with your agency. Instead of saying, maybe it's my fault, maybe I know how I lack the skills or the knowledge, or maybe my service delivery isn't perfect, it's the niche's fault. It's oversaturated. They can't afford my services. It's not a good niche. I should jump onto the next thing and then repeat this entire cycle and never see any form of success. All right, so don't be one of those people. Um, in today's video, I have like a quick list that I wrote down. These are basically criteria that I look for in a successful, well, in the niche that I can be successful in. And if you can like have a positive answer to all of these questions, then there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to succeed in that niche. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight to the point. I'm not gonna overcomplicate this video. It's not gonna be an hour long, don't worry. Um, I have six points written down. And once we get through all of these points, if you can answer all of them, you're good to go. Just focus on the niche, focus on your service delivery, and you will be successful with your agency. So first point, is my niche high ticket? Is it selling a service that is high ticket? For me personally, that's how I've always operated, what I enjoy doing. I like working with businesses who are selling a one-time product that is super expensive. Right? So let's say you take a gym owner or a, just a gym. A gym will sell a membership for let's say 50 bucks per month and that person might stay for 12 months. All right. So in that case, that person is making $600 in LTV, lifetime value of a customer. So 50 bucks every month for 12 months. First of all, 600 is not high ticket. And also what I don't like is that it takes 12 months to make that $600. Whereas when you work with, let's say, pool installers, let's say they, they make pools, they build pools. That is like a big upfront cost, $20,000, $25,000, one-time payment. And you can justify a, a lot higher ticket price for your services because of that. Because it's higher ticket and also they get paid immediately. But when you look at the gym, it takes 12 months for them to get paid. All right, so it's a lot harder to justify a higher like service price for your services um, when the person is not selling something that's high ticket. Next point, can they afford my services? All right, most of the time, if they are really high ticket, you can justify a pretty good price. All right, what I typically tell people to do is try to charge at least 10% of what you make them. So if I sell them a service Let's, let's use the same example, the, the pool installing business. Let's say that pool is worth 25,000 and I brought, the, I brought that lead through my services, then I can charge about 2,500 for that. All right, so it's easy to charge a high ticket price when the service in itself is very high ticket. Now, 10% is just a random number. Most times, uh, from what I'm seeing, it's like five, 6%. It really depends on the market and the frequency of how, man, how many units of that expensive item you're selling per month, All right? But can they afford my services? If they're high ticket, most likely the answer is yes. Is it a growing market, all right? This is pretty basic. You don't wanna work in an industry that's dying, that's not seeing any growth. If the point of your services, especially if you're doing marketing services, is to help that business grow and the market in itself is not growing, you're kind of, you know, shooting yourself in the foot by picking a niche that's like that. All right, so pick an industry that's growing, um, that has a positive outlook in the future so that you can see yourself succeeding with your agency, not just for two, three years, but for 10, 15, 20 years. Now, this point is the most important part, okay? This, this is what's gonna make or break the whole agency thing. Can they benefit from my services? One mistake that I see pretty much everyone doing is that they pick a service, they pick a niche, and then they force that specific service to that specific niche without really understanding how, the bo like how both of them work together. 
To explain this point, I'm going to use an example. Let's say you want to start a ice cream store. You're super passionate about ice cream and you've decided that I will make millions by selling ice cream. That's your the plan. Now, if let's say we were to actually start an ice cream store, first, what's the first thing we would do? You would determine where are we going to be selling that ice cream? Am I just going to open a random store? Am I going to have an ice cream truck? Am I going to supply ice cream to a fancy restaurant? All right. If let's say I am supplying ice cream to a fancy restaurant, am I going to be selling bubblegum ice cream or those SpongeBob popsicle ice cream? The obvious answer is no, right? These are fancier people, older people. They're probably more likely to have those, you know, the classic ice cream, maybe just chocolate or vanilla, nothing too crazy. But if I were to open a ice cream truck, then my market would be more targeted towards younger people. So kids, teenagers, for those people, I can go a bit more crazy. I can have those ice cream, um, SpongeBob flavored popsicles, ice cream things. I can sell bubble gum. You know, I can go crazy with the flavors because that's what kids like. But what you guys are doing with this whole marketing thing is that you're picking bubble gum ice cream and you're like, that's what I'm selling. I don't care who I'm going to sell it to, but that's what I'm selling. It's bubble gum ice cream. And then you go to the fancy restaurant because that's the niche that you picked. And you basically just try to sell the bubble gum ice cream to all of those people. But obviously that type of person who, who would go to a super fancy restaurant, they're not going to eat bubblegum ice cream. Probably one will or a couple will, but most of them, I think we can agree, are not going to want to eat that type of ice cream. They're, they want the classic flavors. Now, when it comes to your marketing services, you have to do this, the same kind of, you have to analyze the market the same way. If I'm going to be selling my marketing services to real estate agents, I cannot sell the service that I would sell to a different market. My service will be very different depending on who I'm targeting. So instead of saying I will do Facebook ads and then picking real estate agents and then doing Facebook ads for real estate agents, do, do the opposite. Say I'm going to work with real estate agents. What do they need? Let's say if you want to do marketing, what type of marketing do real estate agents need in order to sell more homes? Now you would evaluate the market. You would understand that, okay, the buying process in that niche is a lot longer than your traditional um, niche. All right. So maybe I need more follow-ups. How can I do follow-ups? Maybe I'll do email follow-ups. I'll do SMS follow-ups. Now, if I'm selling, let's say to plastic surgeons, and instead of saying, I'm just going to do Facebook ads, you look at their market. You're like, what do they need? Okay. People who go to plastic surgeons, they really want to make sure that they work with a good doctor. So we need lots of social proof. So when I sell my services, I'm not selling Facebook ads as I'm selling them. Look, by using our services, we'll increase your social proof by maybe creating a Facebook group and putting case studies like before and after creating a community, or maybe I'll even do Facebook ads with that and use different types of pictures. You have to adapt your service depending on your niche. That is very important. It's not you pick a service and then you force it down a niche. It's the other way around. You pick a niche and you find out what is the best service that I can deliver for that specific niche. And then you create your service delivery. That's when you create your business. So if I decided I wanted to target that fancy ass restaurant who wants ice cream, I start there. I started the fancy uh, air, like niche. And I'm like, okay, what type of ice cream do they want? They want vanilla. All right, I'll focus my business on vanilla ice cream. If I know that I'm going to have a food truck or a ice cream truck, then I know my target audience is younger people. So then I can go a bit more crazy with the flavors. All right, so that's how it works. You have to start with the market, the niche, and then you pick your service delivery. Okay, that's super important. Lastly, can they be reached by cold calling? I love cold calling. I think it's the easiest way to get clients. So can I easily reach that market? by just simply cold calling. And lastly, this is not a super important point, but it's something to be considered. Do you enjoy the niche? Is it something you're interested in? 
it's a lot easier to stay consistent and to stick with one niche if you actually enjoy working with those you know with that market if i'm a super big bodybuilder and i love gyms and i love all of these crazy things maybe i'll work with personal high-end fitness coaches i'll help them get clients because i really love the market all right if i'm really passionate about real estate invest investment then maybe i can work with real estate agents or i can work with those real estate uh, management companies or airbnb hosts you know stuff like that like you find your interest find a niche that fits these criteria so high ticket afford services growing market and once you pick your niche you ask yourself what is the best service that i can provide to them what do the what does that specific niche need the most you find it you deliver on that service and boom you have a successful business it's not too complicated all right so pick a niche stick with it don't give up adapt your service make sure it's customizable to your niche what do they specifically need reach them by cold calling do a performance-based offer and boom that's how it works it's not too complicated okay so that's gonna be all for today's video i hope this was helpful and uh yeah we'll see each other in the next video bye bye